Hi, in this video we're going to discuss how to analyze an investment portfolio for a five-year return. So the first thing you should do when you come to a case is read over the entire memo. So here are the texts are add the sector name to the sector worksheet. So this is the sector worksheet. Uh, to each row slash stock in the portfolio worksheet. Okay. Add a five-year return from the return worksheet to each row on the portfolio worksheet. Calculate the invested dollars for 2012. Calculate the invested dollars for 2017. Um, at the top of cell H4 and H5, calculate total dollars invested in 2017 and total return 2012 to 2017. Five at the top of cell five, calculate the return in the Russell 3000 return 20. 12 to 2017, use symbol RUA, use the subtotaling function. Okay, so there's a lot here. I think it's these two are referring to the portfolio worksheet. Yes. So I'm going to adjust the memo here. So say on. Portfolio work sheet in. So this is, um, I should tell you which worksheet. So this is one thing with Excel is the entire Excel, the entire Excel here is the workbook. These are sheets within the workbook, like you have sheets in a book. Okay. So let's start with one, we're going to add the sector name. So we want the sector name here. So we're going to just go with formulas, insert, and we're going to use a VLOOKUP. So the VLOOKUP value is going to be, I'm going to use the ticker. The table array, if I go to sectors, table array would be column B and C. Oops. I don't know, let me undo that. Forgot to switch the cells. Okay. Look of value is going to be, we'll keep it in column C. And I want to use the columns here, column B and C, the ticker and the sector. And see this B is one, C is two, because we want to pull the information from the second column of our array. And we want to use false, because that means that we want an exact match. Okay, so here we go. We have the re uh, specialty retail. Let's pull this down. Um, so these look like okay. just making sure that the information looks accurate to the companies that they're referencing. Okay, so there we go. We have the sector pulled in on a VLOOKUP. And then next thing we want to do is the five-year return from the return worksheet. So this is where we want the five-year return. So, we go to this. so we're going to do another VLOOKUP. And the lookup value again, we'll do the ticker. The table array will be from the return. So the ticker to what, column B and column C, and we want the information the cumulative, which is column C, which is B is one, C is two, so we only have two columns, and we want to pull the information from the second column, and again, we want to use false. Okay, so this would be the five-year return. Let me format that in percent. Now, the in total investor dollars is going to be the was the formula builder. It's going to be the total investment in 2012. Go back here. Let's just hit a uh, equals. You could hit equals or plus to start a formula. Total invested dollars times the weight. So here I want to switch this to number, actually currency, and get rid of these zeros. 
So you see all these zeros here means that I needed to lock down cell H3 because it drifted. It goes to H4, H5 here. So when you're using a, step, a cell that you don't want to move, you want to put dollar signs around the H and the 3. So now when I do a fast fill, when the, when the white plus turns to a black plus, I double click, it fills all the information down. So here, I'm going to put this into, uh, I'm going to just reduce this percentage to three positions here. Okay. So now I can double click down my five year return lookup. So the total invested dollars in 2017, since this is a cumulative return, see this is a five year cumulative re return, I can simply multiply the five year return times the invested dollars. And this is my cumulative um, return here. I made a mistake here. What I did here is I just, this is the actual, this is just the return. If I want the full invested return, I'm going to have to do one plus, oops, I wanted this to be parentheses, one plus the invested return. So F8 times Nope, let me start all over again here. What I want to do is I want to take the invested dollar amount and multiply that by one plus the total of the five year cumulative return to get the ending return. Okay, now that makes more sense. All right, and I don't need to change, so let me get rid of those. So, rating currency change is not really needed. This column doesn't need to be that big. Okay, so let's see here. We did the sector name, we did the five year return, we did calculate. The invested dollars 2012 and the invested dollars 2017 on the top of the portfolio calculate total invested dollars 2017 and okay so calculate total invested dollars in 2017 and total dollar return from 2012 to 2017 okay so total invested dollars this is just going to be a sum so I'm going to insert a formula, and I'm going to insert a sum. And the sum is going to be total invested dollars 2017. fill, oops, pass select rather, I got a, this snuck in here, all right, oh, let's start over again, okay, first let me format this to a dollar amount of currency, and let me use the sum you know, I'm just going to type in, instead of using that, I'm just going to type in sum parentheses now here and then close parentheses. Okay, I took longer than I should have. That should have been very simple. Okay. Total dollar return. <coughs> so I want to calculate the total dollar return from 2017, 2012 to 2017. Okay, so if the total dollar return is going to be simply the 15 million I have in 2017 minus the 10 million so this would be the total dollar return would be 5 million. Okay, so let's see what's next. 
Okay, so here it says on the top cell C5 in portfolio worksheet, calculate the total return of the Russell 3000 2012 2017 stock symbol RUA. You can easily do this using Yahoo Finance historical, historical returns. Okay, so let's go to Yahoo Finance. We'll put in, so this is Yahoo Finance. I'll put in RUA under the stock symbol here. We'll search for that. And now I'm going to go to historical data. And I'm going to adjust the dates here. I want to adjust the dates. Let's see here. Okay, so we want start date, end date. So we're on 2012. Okay, so it's 1, 1, 20, 12, 1, actually, we want 12, 31st, 2017. Okay, and let's show that monthly. Apply. Okay, so what we do, what we have here is the close ending 50, 1583 around that too 1583 and we have 1779 1583 and 1779 so I'll say plus 1583 divided by minus Let's see, what was the other one? What was the other amount? Seven, seven seventy nine. Okay, seven seventy nine divided by seven seventy nine. Okay, so I've got to put parentheses here. So this is a 103% return using new the new value minus the old value divided by the old value. So it's been 100% return. And does that make sense when we look at Yahoo Finance? And we see that we go from you know about 800 to close to 1600. Yeah, that's about 100% increase. So our um, what is, I would be interested to know also, I got to change this to be, I'd be interested to know what is our cumulative return. So again, I could use the, the basic formula for a cumulative return would be new, well, using parentheses for the first part, then the most current minus the old, the old investment divided by the old investment so it looks like our cumulative return is 50%. So our mutual fund here didn't do as well as the Russell 3000. All right. So calculate, okay, so use subtotal function to group stock by sector. Include totals for any column with dollars. Calculate cumulative five-year return percentage and total dollars for each sector. All right. Okay, so a subtotal function. So we want to go here, and basically the first thing we should do, I'm going to make a new tab, and I'm going to call this subtotal sectors. And I'm going to copy over, I'm going to take the data here that I want to work with, and I'm going to copy this data and put this in the new worksheet. I'm going to actually paste special, and I'm just going to paste the, the values in number formats because I have those VLOOKUPs that's going to um, disappear. And let me shut down Yahoo Finance before it blows up my computer because of all the pop-ups and ads. Okay, so here is 
the, let me close the formula builder, make this bigger. Okay, so here is the information. I want to like the center of this. Okay, so here is the information company, company name, ticker, percentage weight of the portfolio, total invested dollars, five year cumulative return, and five year total dollar return. So we want to do this by sector. So So we're going to need to add the sector in here. I thought I uh, brought over the sector name. Oh, it is. It's right here. Okay, so I um, got to recopy this. I was pretty sure I had the sector name from earlier. But no big deal. I can just go back and paste over what we had. And let me pay special values and form number of formulas, formats. Okay. Okay, so here's the sector. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort. I'm gonna sort the data under sector. Before you do it, it's very important before you do any subtotaling function that you sort under the the column that you want to subtotal. So I want a subtotal sector. So I sorted sector, and now I'm going to hit, this is on the data tab, this is the subtotaling function. It's not the subtotaling formula you use from the formulas page. So we're not summing this up, we're subtotaling. So I'm going to click on the subtotaling button, and I want to subtotal by sector, and I want to sum everything with dollars. So we have two columns here with dollars. Invested dollars 2012, invested dollars 2017, and I'm going to hit OK. So now instantly, uh, this is level one full detail. Level two is just sector detail. And these are the totals for the sectors. And then level three is all the detail, you know, with the totals put in. So this is a quick way to subtotal and get the sector information. OK, back to the memo. So. Use a subtotaling function, calculate print on cal cumulative or five year return in percentages and dollars for each sector. Okay. So here we have a number of sectors. So I'm going to make a uh, cumulative return here. I'm going to say using that same formula whenever um, new minus old divided by old. So here let's first do cumulative dollars and then we want to do cumulative return and it's already pre-formatted which is nice so cumulative dollars is going to be the new invested dollars minus the original invested dollars and then to calculate Oops. To calculate cumulative return percentage, I could just take the cumulative dollars divided by the total invested original dollars, and I'll get that. Now, this is formatted in dollars, so I want to change this to percent. And I'll open it up. So now I'm just going to copy this down, and I'm going to copy that down. Okay. So I was able to calculate, okay, so six. So I was able to calculate the percent, um, list the top 10 and bottom 10 sectors by return, draft a short memo for me, and this should say, um, discuss the findings, analyze and draw conclusions, make recommendations for the stock fund, some, some make some graphs and charts. Okay, so um, this, is, this is what we call, and the, Draft a oops, an exact executive summary. All right, so I'm going to hit. Whenever I type something, I like to do a final review for spelling. There you go. A couple 
mistakes there. Okay, all cleaned up. All right, so yeah, so last step would be do create an executive summary uh, and including this information in your executive summary. So the idea of the executive summary is you have this information now about your portfolio, about the sectors in the portfolio. The, uh, this is just data. So we have sector return here. So you know what I'm going to do to create the sector return? I'm going to go, I have this already highlighted and I'm going to go and insert a pivot table is another way of creating a shortcuts to get the sector information. So I'm going to put the rows by sector here and then I'm going to select investor dollars and sum of $2017. So now I have I use the pivot table to select the sectors. And this is in dollars, so we want to highlight this. And I'm going to format this. Oops. I'm a temperamental mouse here. Uh, all right, so I think I'll have better luck using the quick key. All right. Let me just format this to currency. So this is what's the pivot table. So I'm going to rename this. We had sector return. And this is another way. It's telling me I already have this. All right. Sector return pivot. So I created a pivot table here. Uh, I'll go ahead and delete this. So I have the sector return here in a pivot table. And again, I can use that same formula I did in the subtotaling, remember I created, I'm just going to copy these two here. All right. Okay, so that didn't copy over well because it's different. I'll leave, I'll leave the titles, but formulas, that's the dollars 20. 17 minus 2012, and then cumulative return. All right. Let's make this bigger so you can see it. Oops. All right. And let's change the formatting. Currency, no change, and percent. And then we could double the white plus, turn this to the black plus. I can double click and do a, a fast fill. Oh, and I see here, somehow, I got these absolutes in here. I don't want that. So let me get rid of these absolutes. The dollar signs around these cells. This is what's freezing it and preventing it from copying down. So now when I copy it down, it should work. I just rewrote the formula to be C4 minus B4, make it easier because of the pivot table to put in some erroneous uh, information. So I have the cumulative returns for the uh, invested dollars in 2012. And we want to wrap these texts here. Okay, so, and then what's nice about the pivot table is once I have this, you know, I could easily make some charts if I wanted to. Uh, I might want to relabel this sectors and then I could highlight everything and I could uh, go to insert 
and I can actually insert some charts if I wanted to, maybe a bar chart, and then we can put the sectors in there, stretch this out a bit. You know, when I stretch this, you'll see more of the titles come in. Um, just an idea of some charts you can create. Okay, now let's open this up. And usually when you have a lot of rows like this, you probably want to go to do some formatting. And on the, on the view page, uh, you want to freeze, let's highlight. We don't need these two rows, let's delete that. And then freeze the top row. And then we also should set a print range. So for all for all sheets, you should highlight. Show this is for every sheet. You want to highlight, go home. Sorry, go to page layout, set the print range, um, double check the print settings, set a, a header. Set a footer, check the sheet, rows of repeat at the top. And then when you um, go to the print, you can actually get an idea of what this would look like. So if I go to the print icon, get an idea of how it looks. And I can see that I'm missing a column here. So then I could go back page setup and maybe in the just shrink the margins a little bit maybe shrink the view area so now when I go to print I get that fourth column in here and it looks very nice okay oops okay so let's go back so that's how I'd organize using another tool, the pivot table, which it doesn't really call for you to do that in this, but that's a quick way. Subtotaling is a similar function to pivot table. I just find pivot table a little bit more functional because in the subtotal, you're going to have these lines between each of the subtotals that can make it difficult to make charts or copy and paste tables in the spreadsheet. Okay, so the last thing you need to do is um, actually after you check all your print ranges and double check all your formatting to make sure everything is formatted properly and the print ranges are set um, and you have the title rows selected so you don't get this drift where you don't see what's going on then you could actually if you have a, a, a larger area I could select the area here and go to view and then I can say let me freeze I want to freeze the, I'll just put the pane like that. So now, let me, uh, so this way when I scroll, it's going to lock that pane down. Okay. Now finally, okay, so once you're confident you have all the print ranges and formatting set up on all the pages and you you know, also have to do the, the top 10 and bottom 10 of the sectors. Top 10, list the top and the top 10 and bottom 10 sectors by return. So you can easily, um, what I would do is I would, I'm just going to copy this pivot data table. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to the top 10, bottom 10. I'm going to right click, paste special. And I'm just going to place the values in number formats. Special. Do the, the formats as well. All right. And then you could just do a simple sort. And you want to sort by cumulative return. And then you can have easily have. You're making a subset. Here are this would be the bottom ten, and then down here you can just grab. And you see this counter up here when I hit. Actually, let me go here. When I hit to ten, because ten rows. 
five columns. Copy. So I can quickly pop this here. Let's expand that section. And this is, um, what I want to do is, I want to bring this format across to all this. And so it looks uniform. We don't want it to look sloppy. So everything looks good. And then, then we put some, so what you can do is here is put some grid lines. I'm gonna copy this, put this down here. Add some grid lines, and I could say here, rename this bottom 10 sectors, and here I could put in top 10 sectors. Okay, so we got the top 10, top 10, bottom 10 uh, sectors filled out here. And you see how this is a 10 here, and this is the word 10? That is not good. You want everything to be kind of make look similar okay now now you can write the memo the executive summary rather so when you write the executive summary you want to create a new worksheet title it executive summary and then here you can insert you want to insert a text box so I'm going to go I don't I'm going to, go to the top row insert text box so you can insert your text box and then you could use the to the memo format from subject intro financial analysis recommendation your three areas look at review the spreadsheet and the first week's videos for how to complete the executive summary to analyze your data here Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful for completing this case. Uh, best of luck. Thank you.